Allez. Mes chers amis. OK. Mes chers amis, si vous voulez bien. If we can get started. The traditional five minutes are over. If you could be seated. And that includes our UKIP colleagues. Mes chers amis, d'abord, euh, je voudrais. First of all, friends, welcome to all of you. And thank you to all the members for giving me the difficult task of uh, chairing the Fisheries Committee. I'd like to uh, welcome my two predecessors. Carmen Fraga is no longer in this uh, parliament, but she was a long-standing member of this uh, committee and she marked her history in the Fisheries Committee. I'm sure she will be missed by all of us. We were used to her particular character. She had many qualities. Gabriel Matteau as well chaired uh, this committee for the second half of the previous uh, uh, term, uh, did a very good job uh, and uh, it's a great honour, although a difficult task, to uh, step into his shoes. For the Fisheries Committee, I'm hoping uh, that uh, uh, we will, of course, uh, do a good job, do a lot of work like others have done before us within a spirit of compromise and uh, ambition for European fisheries. Of course, we're not going to spend the whole afternoon saying thank you to each other. We've got uh, plenty more on our plate. That's why we're going to get down to work now. There are many new colleagues uh, in the committee. Welcome to all of you. I'm sure our new colleagues uh, will quickly get up to speed with the work of our committee. I can also say uh, that uh, our work should be based uh, uh, on uh, intelligence and good cooperation with the Commission and uh, the Council, uh, chaired at the moment by our Italian friends. Welcome to you. And all of that uh, is uh, backed up by Michael Topping from the Secretariat and his team and uh, all our members of staff without whom we would not be who we are. So that's what I wanted to say by means of introduction. I'd like to adopt uh, the agenda first of all. Any objections on the agenda? No. In which case that agenda stands adopted. And I'd like to move straight on to the next item, which is announcements from the chair. I've just given you the announcements. It was uh, my words of welcome and uh, my concern for our uh, work over the coming uh, years. Next item is uh, the general EU budget uh, for 2015. We're going to be looking at this very important subject of uh, the European Commission's 2015 budget. We've prepared an opinion for that. Now, given that we've got a new parliament, uh, the budget ad adoption procedure is slightly unusual. Uh, the opinion had been allocated uh, to a colleague who's no longer uh, with us, uh, Pat the Cope Gallagher, who wasn't re elected, unfortunately. So at the coordinators meeting earlier on, we said we would stick to the status quo for reports that are in the pipeline. So naturally, that report will go back to the Liberals. I think Antonio is going to be dealing with it. But anyway, it's up to you. The Secretariat has proposed a draft opinion, which will be the basis uh, for our discussion. I welcome Laurie uh, Evans, uh, Director General, who can come and sit over here. It's true that this is an unusual uh, room uh, configuration for a committee. 
and I'm sure the Fisheries Committee opinion uh, will uh, uh, be fully incorporated in the procedure via the amendments uh, submitted. Today, the European Commission is going to give us the figures for the draft budget 2015, in particular uh, for fisheries and maritime affairs. I think it's Mr. Mark Johnston who is going to be presenting uh, this for the Commission. Is that the case? Yes, thank you. Uh, Mark Johnston, uh, Director for Resources, and then, of course, each uh, member will have a chance uh, to speak. So, Mr. Johnston, could you speak uh, on behalf uh, of the Commission? Go ahead, please. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, what I'll do now is I'll give you some information on the proposals which the Commission tabled on the 11th of June, which I hope will help you in formulating your opinion and, indeed, the amendments which you will table to the draft budget. So, as I mentioned, the Commission adopted its proposal for the draft budget on the 11th of June. This is slightly later than we would normally table the proposal, but, of course, that was due to the fact that this was an election year. Just to give you a flavour for the budget in its globality, uh, for 2015 the amount of commitment appropriations which have been proposed is $145.6 and the amount of payment appropriations which have been proposed is $142 billion. Of course, what really interests us is, are the amounts which have been proposed for maritime affairs and for fisheries. And there, for commitment appropriations, the Commission has proposed globally an amount of 1 billion and 80 million euros, and for payment appropriations, 1 billion and 7 million euros. And if we put that into the context of the, the broader picture, we're talking about amounts which are equal to 0.7% of the total EU budget. In terms of the characteristics of the budget, if we look at 2014 and we compare it with what we have proposed for 2015, we have a large degree of stability in commitments. That isn't the case for payments. In the case of payments, we have quite a significant increase, 27.5%. And of course, this is due to the fact that we are at the end of one programming period. So in 2015, it will be the last year of implementation of the EFF and we'd be really at the beginning of a new programming period under the EMFF. In terms of what we've proposed for the EMFF, the envelopes reflect what was agreed in the legislative procedure, where we have amounts defined for shared management and we have amounts defined for the envelopes in direct management. Before looking at the figures specifically that we proposed, I want to mention one thing which has occurred since we've uh, proposed the draft budget, and that is that on the 15th of July, um, Coraper agreed on a position on the draft budget. And in total, they are proposing to reduce for Title 11 3.5 million in commitments and 30 million in payments. Now, they don't sound like very large amounts of money, but let me emphasize to you that 30 million in payments is a very significant reduction for us. We already find ourselves in a very challenging situation to meet all our obligations. And even the 3.5 million, which is proposed in commitments, does affect things which are very important for us, such as the Fisheries Control Agency, such as the Envelope in Direct Management for Control and Enforcement, as well as technical assistance, which is absolutely essential for programme implementation. So if I turn now to, to some of the details of the budget, as you know, we've got two operational chapters in the budget. One it covers the international dimension, and within that chapter we have basically got two budget lines. And the main budget line there covers the Sustainable Fisheries Partnership Agreements, and there we're in a case of basically business as usual, stability. So in 2014 we have 145 million in payment appropriations, and what we have proposed for 2015 is the same amount. Of course, that's distributed across the operational budget line and the reserve. The other budget line that we have in this chapter covers the contributions which we make to regional fisheries management organisations and to other international organisations. And these are our obligatory contributions. So basically, our membership fees. 
And again, we're in a state of complete stability there. We're looking at an envelope of just over 6 million euros. If I turn then to the other chapter, which is entitled Europe European Maritime and Fisheries Fund, one of the striking features of that is the amount of payment appropriations which we have related to the European Fisheries Fund. In 2015, of course, we have no new commitment appropriations for that. But as I mentioned, 2015 will be the final year of implementation of the EFF. And for that reason, we see that we have got 556 million uh, proposed in terms of payment appropriations. And then if we turn to the EMFF proper, we know that we have two types of spending under that. We have the spending which is in shared management and we have the spending which is in direct management. And the EMFF represents by far the largest envelope in the chapter, or in the, in the title. We've got 73% of the entire envelope is made up of the EFF, EMFF expenditure. And in terms of commitment appropriations, we're talking about an amount equal to 798 million. Now that's a very considerable amount because this will be the second year of the EMFF, so it's the second year of the instalment for the operational programme. The amount which we're proposing for payments is much less than that. It's only 144 million, and that is for the simple reason that even though we're making a large amount of commitments, the member states will not be very advanced in implementation, and we will be looking primarily at making the advance payments and some small interim payments. The other aspect of the EMFF is that it, of course, covers expenditure for direct management. And this is a small envelope, which is for actions which are implemented directly by the Commission. And the amount for operational actions is 76 million in commitment appropriations. And this is divided over a number of priorities. The first priority is for the integrated maritime policy. And there we're looking at an amount of 32.7 million for commitment appropriations and an amount of 25 million for payment appropriations. And essentially, the actions that we will cover here will be the actions we've been undertaking in the past, but scaled up to some extent. So things like marine knowledge, development of the common information sharing environment, uh, and various blue growth initiatives. The other uh, spending area that we're going to cover for a value of 43 million is for the accompanying measures for the common fisheries policy. So this is the full range of measures that we need to implement to ensure that we're in a position to formulate the policy, to follow up on the policy, uh, and to make new proposals. So here we're looking at expenditure on scientific advice and knowledge. We're also looking at the small envelope that we have for the acquisition of shared control means, which are to be used by several member states for control and enforcement activities. And then we're looking at voluntary contributions to international organizations. And these are complementary to our obligatory contributions, which allow international organizations and RFMOs to carry out specific activities which are of particular interest to the EU. And of course, we're looking at governance and communication measures. And last but not least, EU MOFA, which is our market intelligence tool. And the last thing I'd like to mention before winding up is the amount which has been proposed for the European Fisheries Control Agency. In 2015, we're proposing the same amount as we have in the budget for 2014. That's 9.2 million euros. And this is because the agency is considered to be a cruising speed agency, and the Commission has adopted a policy of maintaining the budget contribution for cruising speed agencies at the level at which it was fixed in 2014. So by way of general conclusion, what I'd like to say is that 2015 is the first year when the budget has been prepared fully based upon the envelopes which were decided in the EMFF. Um, it won't be surprising for you to hear that for future budgets, because of the structure of the EMFF and because of the clear delimitation of the envelopes, the future budgets are going to be very similar to the budget that we have in 2014. And I'd like to end by saying that we hope we can count on the support of the Fisheries Committee, as we have done in the past, to ensure that we are adequately resourced and to deal particularly with the cuts which the Council is proposing to make in this policy area. Thank you. Merci, Mark. Comme d'habitude... 
Thank you, Mark. Uh, that was clear, concise, precise, as usual. Thank you very much. Any comments from colleagues? Gabriel Mato? Thank you, Chairman. Thank you for your kind words about my chairmanship. And as I said uh, at the coordinators uh, meeting, I wish you all the very best. It's not going to be an easy ride, but we're here to help you however we can. I also want to be concise. Uh, there's going to be a deadline for amendments. Uh, uh, but there's one conclusion I draw, and that is that if it's 0.7 percent uh, of the budget, I hope interest in uh, fisheries will be greater than that 0.7 percent of the budget. There are proposals to even further uh, reduce uh, the budget for fisheries. We need to know what we wish to achieve. We can't be working hard, all of us, for a new a common fisheries a policy, a fund which has taken us a lot of work and reach agreement on that, and then see that we have a very ambitious uh, fisheries policy, but that it's not backed up by the necessary funds. It seems to be a contradiction. I mean, you can say a lot of things and say we all uh, want uh, maximum sustainable yield. Uh, we want to uh, uh, avoid uh, uh, wastage. Uh, we want to fight against IEU, but we're going to reduce the funds that can back us up in uh, implementing uh, all of these policies. So I think we need to think very carefully about what we want, what we want for fisheries in the future. That's uh, the job of all of us in this committee, which we'll continue to do in the immediate future. I, I, I can say as, my, as a conclusion that we will in any case uh, continue to uh, work on this, suggest the necessary uh, amendments. One thing that's absolutely clear is that fisheries represents much more than 0.7% uh, of the budget. Thank you. Gabriel. Thank you, Gabriel. I uh, agree with you. Yes, go ahead, please. Uh, hello, D um, David Coburn, UKIP MEP for Scotland. Um, 657 million is a ludicrous amount of money and a racket for various nations to rate Britain's and particularly Scotland's fish stocks. I see little being done about fish discard, which is also a scandal. And Sinclair Juncker has stated that Scotland will be out of the EU if Scotland votes for separation from England. This means that Scotland, I presume, will get a 200 mile fishing limit. Uh, I would like to uh, ask my Scottish National Party compatriots whether they will bargain away at this 200 mile limit which would help Scottish fishing industry. Will they bargain it away to get back into the European Union? Merci pour cette remarque. Thank you for that very relevant uh, comment. Uh, we, I'm sure we'll become accustomed to these comments. Any further comments? Yes? Excusez-moi, parce que je connais pas encore tous les... I'm sorry, I don't know all your names yet. Mr. Blanco. Thank you. It's the first time I'm speaking in this committee. I'm a new member. I wasn't planning on speaking. But having heard the director, some alarm bells rang in my head because, as outlined, as this budget uh, has been outlined uh, for fisheries, I, I have to say it's very excessive, 0.7 per cent, and further possible reductions. That must uh, ring the alarm bells, particularly for regions and uh, autonomous communities uh, such as Galicia in Spain where the fisheries sector is strategic and, and is priority. So I want to draw attention to this. I would like to ask this committee to 
sound the alarm bells as it has done in the past. It shouldn't, this budget shouldn't be reduced. Quite on the contrary, we need more resources. These resources are insufficient to develop such uh, strategic uh, sectors in many parts of our territory. Merci. Thank you. Paco. Thank you, Alain. Well, I agree with Gabriel Mato, the EPP coordinator, and Don José Blanco was from Galicia, like me. We are uh, the first fishing region of Europe. And when I talk about uh, 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 the budget for fisheries, I'm going to have to be very worried for next year. It's very difficult for us uh, to pass on this bad news to workers and fishermen that are going to be affected by this reform. We, we don't want to have to tell them that words uh, are not being backed up uh, by the figures. I can tell this committee that I will fight for there to be uh, consistency between uh, words and the figures and that the resources are not further reduced. Merci, Paco. Uh, je passe la parole à... Thank you, Joao. Muito obrigado, Presidente. Bom, uh... Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. We share this concern as well. And what has been said about the insufficiency of the budget. Unfortunately, I have news for the EPP and the Socialists. That is that uh, um, the multi-annual financial framework has been adopted right up to 2020, and uh, it is far too small. The same goes for all budgets. We're hoping that we'll be able to intervene to some extent. It's an extremely dangerous situation, or it can become very dangerous. Generalizing a number of policies is very dangerous, and we have to bear in mind the cost of these policies, which is disproportionate. For general uh, fisheries policy, we're calling for strong decentralization. That didn't happen. Centralization and communitarization has been pushed forward, including the funds. That's a very dangerous situation. There are three points I'd like to make, three aspects that our committee that our group has pointed out for a long time and needs to be taken into account for this budget. Coastal fisheries, first of all, small-scale fisheries, very small operations. This segment uh, of the fisheries sector is extremely important. We've got a parliament uh, own initiative uh, report uh, which uh, we completed during the last parliamentary term. There's a pilot project, a very small one, which has been made available. And I'd like to know what the result of this pilot project is. Um, what the purpose of these funds were. It was less than uh, the amount that was adopted by the Parliament. It was a very small project. It's important to shed light on that uh, project. And then the data, research, Of course, we need greater scientific knowledge about resources. Maybe that should be made compulsory. 
the funds available for data collection was insufficient in the past. Only 50% of the cost was uh, covered by the EU. It's possible that that 50% has been increased in the EU budget. A, a, a larger percentage is covered. Is that sufficient? We have our doubts. And then biodiversity. For the first time, we have the possibility of laying down certain time periods for biodiversity. That's an important instrument for sustainable fisheries. It's important to stick to that time frame. Perhaps the Commission can tell us about national plans in different member states for biodiversity. Thank you. Thank you. Please, uh, colleagues, try to be concise. Isabella Levine. Uh, thank you, and thank you for the presentation of the budget. I just wanted to stress uh, that this is going to be a challenge, a challenge with the implementation of the new fisheries policy. Hence the importance of uh, the fisheries control office in Vigo. We have to be able to monitor uh, wastage and make sure that uh, the reform is implemented properly. It's, uh, discards need to be monitored, etc. It's going to be very important uh, uh, over coming years. So we're concerned about the office in Vigo not getting enough funds. What does the Commission think about that? Do you think we should give uh, more money to the office in Vigo? Thank you. Merci, Isabella. Je passe maintenant la parole. Thank you. I give the floor now to Mrs. Uh, Senra. I hope that's correct. I don't know everyone's name properly yet. Uh, Mrs. Senra. Buenas tardes. Gracias, President. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm new. I'm from uh, Galicia, an area where fishing is very strategic, as we already know. I'd first of all just like to echo the general concerns about the cut in the fisheries budget. Uh, we've already heard that here. Secondly, I'd like to ask the Commission whether in this cut, whether this is going to affect uh, small-scale fishing. And whether you've provided any budget to try to um, develop uh, small-scale fishing uh, production transformation. And whatever happens, I would like to say the cut in the budget should not impact on small-scale fishing. Merci beaucoup pour votre question. Je passe la parole désormais. Thank you. Mrs. Nirieda. Um, again, I am a new MEP, like many here. Um, I'm afraid I missed the very beginning of the meeting, so I'm not you know, completely au fait with what was said. Um, however, I just want to highlight, I suppose, the urgency that we have to address the discards and the way that our fishermen, certainly in Ireland, the small-scale fishermen, are being criminalised uh, by increasingly bureaucratic um, p penalties that they have imposed on them, in particular in relation to, the, to these discards. It's just unsustainable, and for an island nation not to be able to fish our own waters with a decent quota is literally killing off uh, hundreds and hundreds of years of, of tradition in, in Ireland. So I really hope that this is addressed as a matter of urgency. I also am despairing at the level of budget that's, that's going to be spent on it, considering that the fishing industry in general contributes enormously to economics. So I look forward to working on this with you. Merci. Thank you. Isabel Thomas. Thank you, Chairman. I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome all of the new members to the Fisheries Committee. I'd like to, first of all, react 
to what João Ferreira said on the multi-annual financial framework. I share his uh, desire to see a um, short-term review of this. I think what interests us at the moment is the 2015 budget. The fact that we've barely started and the uh, Council is already suggesting a cut to important issues such as um, sustainable development, uh, which will affect the activities of small-scale fisheries but also of um, fishing territories and also are proposing cuts when it comes to um, the uh, to control and the Vigo office. I think there's really a problem. For, well, over the few years when I've been a member of the parliament, we've seen a huge shortcoming in the data. Um, we need more scientific data if we're to meet our objectives. On control, we urgently need to see harmonization in control and how we know how important the Vigo office is in doing this. Then for um, sustainable development aid in fisheries, I would like to emphasize that we've already had a, a white year, a blank year in 2014. 2014 was the year when we were discussing the MFF. There were lengthy discussions on that. The trilogue went on for a very long time. Following that, we had to update all of the operational programs. So it, what this meant was that in 2014, there were basically no new payments under the new European funds for maritime and fishery affairs. I think if in 2015 we're also going to have a lower budget, and this is really going to penalise fishing. 2015, on the contrary, should have been a strong year to compensate for what happened in 2014, and I don't understand Council's choice. Thank you. La parole à Madame. Mrs. Azakamp, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Thank you. Voorzitter, uh, ook ik ben nieuw in. Chairman. I too am a new member of this committee and on behalf of the Party for Animals I hope that I will uh, let a new uh, voice be heard here. Uh, obviously we uh, would like to express our concern for the welfare of uh, fish and we hope that humane uh, catching methods are used and that the appropriate funds be made available for uh, animal friendly uh, means uh, to be used. And despite the shortage of information, um, I see that um, fishing is continuing and this is very much uh, in uh, contradiction with the uh, appropriate principles and I will endeavour to try to do something about this. Uh, Ulrike Rodust. Thank you, Ulrike Odust. Vielen Dank, Herr Vorsitzender. Thank you, Chairman. Everybody has said uh, very important things. We've got a new reform. We need enough money to put it into practice. But uh, as a German member of this committee, I've asked for the floor to say that it doesn't help us if we keep saying we need more money but Council, our governments at home as well, uh, leave us out in the cold. I'm saying this as a, a German national. I'm talking about a European budget which is a third of the national uh, budget in Germany. We have to serve uh, 27 countries with this small budget, so I don't think uh, we uh, should be that surprised that uh, the fisheries sector has so little. I would like to ask all colleagues, old and new, to put this firmly on the agenda at home and make sure uh, that, uh, first of all, we organise our own revenue here in Europe and, secondly, that we get enough money 
to uh, be able uh, to back up uh, our European policies. Merci, Ulrike. Thank you. Would anyone else like to take the floor? Uh, again? You want to take the floor again? Well, uh, the lady from Germany made a lot of sense there. Uh, but the thing is, why don't, we, why don't we just leave it to our, na our nations to do this? Why should the European Union be involved? Why not return it to nation states and get rid of the budget altogether and let the nations deal with these matters? Bien sûr, une Yes, we could send it back to uh, countries, get rid of European policy altogether. We're not going to go into that now. This is not the time or place. Uh, you can dis debate that in plenary. I listened to what colleagues to say with respect, but we're not going to open this debate now. If you want to respond to um, our, our colleague here, the answer is no. Otherwise, we're going to spend the whole of the Fisheries Committee uh, making speeches and responding. Comments off mic. Yes, I explained this in the coordinators meeting. Sometimes we say in French something anything that's excessive is sometimes insignificant. Uh, I think that's all we can say. However, I listen to what my colleagues have to say. I, I'll hear what they have to say. It doesn't necessarily mean I agree with them. Okay, Mark, lots of questions for you. The budget's obviously an important topic. Uh, two points I would like to briefly point out before you take the floor. Joao on the vote on the MFF. I would echo what Isabel Tomás just said. Um, we voted on it, but it doesn't mean that we don't regret the role of fisheries. Then um, we all in uh, voted on the increase in the budget for data collection. Uh, Mark, now, um, please, we'll take the floor to answer your question. Okay, I'll, I'll just deal with a couple of, of main points because I think an awful lot of the interventions went in the same sense. Um, the first thing that I'd say is that every year we are confronted with this situation in the budgetary procedure. Every year the Council cuts. Um, every year I come to you, I put this before you. Every year you table amendments and every year the cuts don't stick. So I'm very hopeful that we can do the same thing this year. Um, I would also say to you that we are talking about an amount of 3.5 million in commitment appropriations and 30 million in payment appropriations. So I believe that's entirely manageable. In terms of the, the resources that have been allocated to data collection, indeed, these have been significantly increased this year. And indeed, as part of the EMFF, the increase in the resources for data collection is, of course, an increase in resources under shared management, which will mean that it will be easier for the member states to manage these resources. And the increase in resources was also accompanied by an increase in the co-financing rate. So the co-financing rate went from 50% up to 80% for data collection, which should mean that we have better and more uh, reliable information in that regard. Um, on the specific question of the pilot project, there is a pilot project in this year's budget, in the 2014 budget on small-scale coastal fisheries. We are not at the stage of having implemented that yet because this will involve a call for proposals. It will involve contracting in a transparent and public manner. And, of course, we will keep Parliament informed on this, and I will make sure that relevant information is transmitted through to this committee. On the specific question of the agency in Vigo, um, well, the Commission has a horizontal line on this. This is reflected in the proposal which we made. We are living in difficult times. The agency, uh, like all agencies, is funded in the context of the multiannual financial framework, and it's funded under operational appropriations from Heading 2. So the line which has been taken, namely that the budget for a cruising speed agency should not be increased between 2014 and 15, is not something which is particular to the Vigo agency. And we believe that by uh, managing priorities, by reprioritizing, uh, by managing deftly, that the resources which are proposed are sufficient. Um, in terms of the cuts and the potential impact on small-scale coastal fisheries, there will be no impact on uh, small-scale coastal fisheries via these cuts, because none of the envelopes which are in shared management have been cut, and that's where that's financed from. I think they're the main points that I, I would like to say at this stage. 
Merci, Marc. Thank you, Mark, and thank you to colleagues for the debate. I would just like to recall, first of all, that Council adopted its position on the 16th of July, just gone, and that the figures that we discussed a moment ago will be uh, sent to you by the Secretariat. I would also say that given the agreements that we ran through a moment ago with the coordinators, the uh, uh, have representatives from the ALDI group here, Marino and Pinto. The um, de deadline for tabling amendments is the Friday, the twenty fifth of July at midday, and we'll have our next committee meeting on Wednesday, the third of September, twenty fourteen. So that's on the budget. I'm sure we'll have a lot to say, and there'll be a lot to do um, on many different areas. Moving on now to the next point. I would like to officially welcome Larry Evans here with us. And we'll be having an exchange of views on, on the overview of the state of play regarding the implementation of the Common Fisheries Policy. For new members who don't know, yet know uh, Larry is Director General of DG Mare. And so responsible for the CFP reform. She has to be present in the first um, meeting of the term and is dealing with many topics that are very important to us. Uh, I was a um, rapporteur on the report on maritime and fisheries funds. So I'd like to give you, ask you to give us an overview of the state of play regarding implementation of the CFP. If you wish, you can also tell us about the external side and give us a more detailed run through of partnership agreements in the fisheries sector with our friends from third countries. Then after we've heard from you, we'll open the floor to, for debate. Coordinators from each of the groups, uh, we're going to have to organize this quite well. Coordinators from each group can take the floor first and then Anyone who wishes to can take the floor to express whatever they want. But we do have to be quite organised about this and structured. Each coordinator will have two minutes and other members one minute, perhaps one and a half. So, Lowry, um, I gladly give you the floor. Thank you very much, Alan. Uh, may I say to kick off, uh, congratulations to all of the returning MEPs. Congratulations, Alan, for your new, new job in charge of the PESH committee. But let me say in particular to the new MEPs who I haven't yet had the pleasure of meeting, uh, DG Mare, the one thing you need to understand about DG Mare is that we are there to help you do your job. So that is my general message today. So me and my staff are at your disposition should you wish for anything in the, in the nature of technical assistance or clarifications at all times. So this is how it works. We've uh, helped, I think, I hope anyway, the Parliament shape a really historic reform of the common fisheries policy. For sure, this was the proof that a co-decision was the friend of change. So if ever anybody in my services had any doubt about that before, I think going into this legislature, you can be convinced that uh, your interlocutors from the Commission services are true believers in the co-decision process now. Uh, and before I talk a little bit about the CFP reform, and I'm going to concentrate more on the internal volley of that today, Alan, uh, but if there are questions about the external volley, I'll be happy to take them. Um, let me just do one advertising uh, slot for maritime policy more generally. I mean, as you know, DG Mare deals with the common fisheries policy, but also maritime policy. And it's a matter of some regret to me personally that this committee doesn't actually have the wider remit. So I really hope that all of the MEPs that new and old that have an interest in the sea in general also take an interest in the maritime issues that this Parliament will take, perhaps outside the remit of this committee as such. And uh, for sure, this is really important in the big scheme of things. We can hardly talk about the ecosystem approach from a fish-specific perspective. Uh, if we're talking about sea management, then we have to take the maritime management issues in general way beyond fish. This is how we believe, and I hope that you believe that too. So on the reform, 
So on the reform on the internal side, let me start with a reference like Gabriel did to uh, maximum sustainable yield. So our focus on access for the future implementation is for sure uh, around that. So maximum sustainable yield is good for the stock, but more important probably is it's good for the economy of the fleets, it's good for the economy of our coastal communities in the future. Uh, one thing can't go without the other. So we haven't, it's not that we are starting with this vision now. We have been carrying on that vision uh, for a while, but the legal and political environment has changed with the reform. So we have quite a good basis in terms of the Northeast Atlantic stocks, let me say it like this. A lot of progress has been made there. Our Baltic sea basin, I would say, stands up to scrutiny on a global scale in terms of the progress that's been made. Uh, so there's good news. So let's say in 2009, my notes here say that we had five stocks fished at MSY level, and in 2013, we had 27 stocks fished at MSY level. So there's been an awful lot of progress, both by the stakeholders and by, shall we say, the responsibility taken by the ministers, and I see uh, some people who know that more than I do, uh, in the council in front of me. So, good news. There's also really bad news. I encourage you to look really closely at the numbers that we've given out in the policy statements recently for the Mediterranean. For sure, we will be needing the Parliament's help uh, to get to a better place over the next five years, let me say it like that, uh, for the states of the stock and the states of the fish Mediterranean. That is really bad. One of the tools that we have, and you have revived it, is the tool of the management plan. The tool of the management plan is going to be a helpful thing in terms of putting meat on the bones of this reform and getting the stocks into better shapes, shape. So you've cracked now the legal and institutional dispute uh, that there was there between the Council and the Parliament. So we in the Commission now understand that it's for us to deliver. So we understand that we have to deliver really fast because you're impatient to make progress. So I can absolutely say to you that for the Baltic, that work is really very advanced and we plan to give you that first legislative proposal to get your teeth into uh, just after the summer break. So this is a really important new legislative proposal. It's the first of a new generation. So in this Baltic Sea multi-species plan, we will be giving you the elements in which you can decide as a parliament what is the template you want to follow also for further plans uh, that will come afterwards. The work that's gone into the proposal stage already is, is, is significant. There's been an enormous amount of discussions with the stakeholders, with the region, with the member states concerned, but now you get to see if this is politically what, it, uh, what you want to do, whether you think this translates the deal that you've got with the council in the real way. So that's for sure an interesting dossier that you will have straight away after the summer holidays. Our work on the North Sea in this regard is also relatively well advanced. So we are going to try and extract out of the scientists, it's really difficult to do this, um, some meaningful basic input that also lets us prog progress very quickly for a proposal for a mixed fishery approach also for the North Sea. And we, try, we will try and get that to you as quickly as possible. I'll give you an indicative timing of perhaps the beginning of next year. The rest of the work needs new science. So let me say to you that we are advancing that as fast as we possibly can. This is, for example, for the very old dead plans no, of horse mackerel and anchovy in the Bay of Biscay. But there are other stocks, other fisheries, that we all need to be looking at now. Let me put some of these on your radar screens already in a very informal way, because I need to discuss this with my present boss and my new boss before we can make any proposals. So this is off the record now, Alan, okay? I think we need to be also looking at fisheries that are not in good shape with a view to accelerating, helping those areas get onto a sounder footing. So I'm thinking about the Celtic Sea. I'm thinking about the Iberian Atlantic region. I'm thinking about the Northern Adriatic. I'm thinking about the Northwest Mediterranean. So there, that is a plea, 
I think that I'm going to put into the public domain for everybody who's interested in those fisheries to, try, to start thinking about it. We need to be putting our ears open to the stakeholders to see how they perceive it and then to work with these people to see how we can get out of the suboptimal, let me say it like that, suboptimal position that we're in in those fisheries right now. We need to be listening and then we need to be making proposals as a commission. But we need a very strong and very urgent listening phase right now. So that's the long-term management plans. I know you're going to be very interested in that. The Mediterranean, though, I'm going to come back to it because the situation is really so bad. So we've improved on the science, and the more we know, the worse it is. So of the stocks that we know about now, 90% of those stocks are overfished. So this is really a very desperate situation for the long-term health of the fishery communities in the Mediterranean countries. This is not just about what Europe does, it's also about what the neighbours do. Of course it is. But we now need to do two things very actively. One, as Commission, is we need to check whether the Member States' plans that have been adopted under the existing Mediterranean regulation stand up to scrutiny in terms of what is required now in terms of the new basic regulation. So we need to accelerate that. And you may want to get involved in information about that, at least, in your new uh, expert committee. Could be. Um, and, of course, we need to, as EU, really make sure that those that we are putting forward to the international body, the GFCM in particular, actually go hand in hand in parallel with what we do as European Union. Because we, the, a lot of the Mediterranean is high seas, we have to make sure that what happens just outside the economic zones in the Mediterranean, these are very small, actually makes sense in terms of what is necessary as well. Landing obligation. Let me talk about the discard ban, Mr. Coburn. This is one of the most dramatic things from the new reform. And that landing obliga obligation comes in in 2015. I have good news in that the preparations for implementation are well underway. I would say to you that they exceed my highest and most optimistic uh, expectations in, in reality. Um, we have regional proposals from every part of the EU other than the Black Sea. So even the Mediterranean, which is a real breakthrough. And the first look that we've had at the proposals um, I would say to you, in an again off the record and grossier way, so far so good, really. We are putting that out to the scientists now uh, for their double check. Uh, but, you know, this first stage is not so complicated. I think we can be very optimistic. So you can expect us to proceed to the use of the delegated acts that you have legislated. And I hope to be giving you those delegated acts um, if I... If my staff will cry now and scream, but I hope to be able to give you those by very early October, uh, because that is also necessary, in fact, for the fishermen to know what it is they have to do. That's the minimum. So this first phase, I think, is going on very well. The regionalization aspect, I think, is leading to some very good, innovative thinking. I think we can be very happy. Then it will be more difficult the following year, no doubt about it, and we can discuss that if you like. In parallel with the landing obligation, as you know, one of the legislative uh, programs that you, pro uh, proposals that you have on your table coming in, inherited from the last uh, Parliament, is the so-called omnibus regulation. So this is the proposal that amends the technical and control measures to align that part of the law with the new legal obligations that have been introduced in the new CFP. So I'm just going to say something very straightforward to the new members. From a Commission's perspective, this is cheap and cheerful, urgent proposal. So we need to make these minimum amendments very quickly so as not to have a situation of legal dissonance for the fishermen. Next year, very quickly next year, we will make a proposal to transform and reform that technical measures legislation. So there's a patch, there's a quick fix, 
and then we have substantive reform. This is a really important detail to understand. And we can discuss together what form that second stage, the massive reform uh, of technical measures, should take uh, together in a really open way, starting this aut autumn as well. Um, on the omnibus, the Council has reached a position where it is ready to go to the trilogues now. So in the, in the period when you were away getting re-elected, the Council did its homework, so the Council is ready to go. So you need to, I think, probably take up the baton, uh, Alan, as, as fast as possible, I hope. Um, on the, my tour, uh, tour de raison of the internal volley of the CFP, the financial volley, Mark has touched on it in terms of the technical aspects of payments, but let me say to you where we are in terms of, very quickly, the implementation of the EMFF and our perception of that. So, strictly speaking, this is not legislative now, but I know you want to know about it. The discussions we have had with the Member States mean that even though the legislative dossier was very delayed relative to the other financial dossiers, in fact, the Member States are catching up very fast. So most member states are pretty advanced in terms of putting together their operational programs and we expect to be looking at that with the member states in the autumn. So what we will be making sure is that what is proposed by the member states is consistent with what you have legislated because that legislative consistency is important. It's not business as usual. This new round of programming is going to be a bit different to the last one because putting into uh, practice the legislative changes that you have uh, put in, into, into law. So that's what we will be looking at in the autumn. And there's some delegated acts that will be coming your way also from that uh, for scrutiny uh, imminently. So let me leave it there. But if you really want me to go to external, it depends a bit on your time. I can perhaps do it in terms of... Uh, answers to specific questions, however you want, or I can do it like this. Bon, merci, uh, Laurie, pour cette présentation. Well, thank you very much, Laurie, for that presentation. We'll do what I suggested earlier on. Coordinators will take the floor for two minutes each. You could then reply to that first series of questions, and then we'll open up the floor to other colleagues. Personally speaking, I have a couple of questions which I would like uh, to put to you before I pass the floor over to the coordinators. I would like the Commission to uh, inform us uh, when it intends to have uh, the uh, single European baskets uh, for uh, fish and fish farming. We were told that it wouldn't be possible uh, because of the implementation period required for the EMFF, and I'd like to know whether any progress has been made um, on that score. Then, uh, with regard to the landing obligations, um, I'd like to know how the Commission intends avoiding uh, the sales of um, fish which would be undersized and uh, which would have been caught um, by accident. You also refer to the omnibus provisions. I will be rapporteur for, for, for this regulation. You know that this is going to lead to the amendment of several other regulations which are in force at the moment, as you said. So the Commission's position, therefore, is, is really very difficult uh, to, to read because you have to constantly refer to other documents which are being amended. So with a view to making our uh, life easier and, and colleagues' uh, work easier. Could I formally ask the Commission to provide a version of its proposal with all the uh, amendments it's proposing to the original texts? Uh, clearly uh, pointed out to us, clearly highlighted that should help us make some progress here. I'd like to pass the floor over to the coordinators. Gabriel Amato, the coordinator of the EPP, has the floor. General. Thank you, Chairman. Well, yes, it's nice to see the Director General. We used to be side by side, now we're one in front of the other, but always working together in interest of fisheries. On the behalf of the EPP, I would like to offer you our full cooperation 
it's true uh, that uh, we're all uh, in favour uh, of uh, the common fisheries policy. The Parliament has made a special effort to amend the proposal, make it more viable. Well, that's what we thought was more viable. I think we should be happy, at least partly happy. We have greater knowledge uh, about the state of resources, positive data on uh, the uh, state of the stocks. And uh, this uh, leads me to say that we need to be we need to have an objective, not just for the common fisheries policy, but in general, that is to get a maximum sustainable yield uh, in place, maintaining uh, 2015 or maximum to 2020 for a reduction of mortality rates. It's true that uh, fishing uh, opportunities is what uh, we're discussing at the moment. It's a fundamental issue. I'm not just talking about uh, uh, Northern Hake. I'm thinking about mixed fisheries as well. I've only got to two um, minutes. So I'll just talk about the Mediterranean, a collective concern. We all agree on that. The situation in the Mediterranean is worrying. So please count on our support wherever necessary to take whatever measures are best place to uh, improve the situation, including technical regulations and better cooperation in all fields. Perhaps agree on management uh, methods, common management methods, uh, which are fundamental in order to achieve this. We've been talking about uh, discards. I think we all agree that uh, we need to make progress here. And I would uh, link that up to the omnibus regulation, although the chairman has uh, been uh, talking uh, about uh, uh, the uh, reform of this regu uh, omnibus regulation and taking on the job on behalf of all of us. But I think it goes beyond uh, simply giving uh, coherence to the different actions. I'd like the Commission to take another step. I tried without any good results in the past. The Commission tried uh, to uh, give us a blank check with the omnibus regulation. It uh, made use uh, of uh, the situation to include much more than what was necessary in that reform, which was supposed to enter into force uh, in January 2015. I think that was clearly an error, because the Parliament was certainly not going to uh, allow that. Uh, so I would like to ask the Commission to make an effort to reduce and formally make another proposal uh, reducing considerably uh, the previous proposal and c including only those measures that are absolutely necessary because that is the only way. And then there's something else of which uh, is pending, the reform of the technical uh, measures regulation. Certainly we need to make progress there because the omnibus regulation attempted to do one thing, and I would say that on delegated acts and implementing acts as well. I'm coming to an end. Uh, video surveillance, the uh, implementing acts have been used. We don't really agree with that. And there were particular elements on the technical measures uh, that we're attempting to reform. And we don't think it's uh, the place nor the time uh, for that reform. Thank you. Merci, Gabriel. Donc, Thank you, Gabriel. Please do try to stick to the uh, two minutes. So, uh, Ulrike now for the uh, Socialist Group. Thank you, Larry Evans. Thank you very much. I'm looking forward to uh, working closely with you over the next uh, five years. We've already had very good cooperation in the past. I'm sure we will in the future. I'm convinced of that. I'm also very happy uh, that you said that MSY is uh, finally uh, identifiable. We've got good results in the Baltic. We've heard from 2009 until 2013, many uh, stocks have now uh, been brought up to a healthy level. There uh, is uh, no better evidence of uh, the fact uh, that the scientists were right in pushing us towards the MSY. I will concentrate on long-term management plans. 
and I would like to recall that in March we all reached agreement to uh, Parliament, Commission and Council and that uh, was uh, a, a green light for the Commission uh, to start to act. I think straight after the summer break, and I said this uh, as coordinator in the coordinators meeting, straight after the holidays we need to get to grips with the Baltic Sea Management Plan because uh, the, there is no uh, management plan there, so Baltic Sea fishermen are in the uh, situation where they're catching lots of herring, but they can't certify it, which means they can't sell it. So it's very important that in September we have the Baltic Sea management plan on the agenda and that we all uh, act uh, towards the criteria that we've all agreed in and at the latest that plan needs to be adopted by the end of the year. All those who know me know uh, that I attach great importance to what the scientists have told us because they are the experts, of course the fishermen as well, but the scientists are very important to, to me here and I hear that in the Baltic Sea there was a calculation error. The data was wrong. There are hefty discussions ongoing at the moment among the scientists. So I would like to issue a request to our chairman to make sure that ICES is invited here in September to explain to us the quota calculations for that year and how it was possible to have such uh, errors. We know, the, the scientists uh, know that without that uh, uh, basic uh, calculation uh, method uh, it's impossible to make forecasts, uh, so uh, we have to make sure that we find the right solution. So please make sure that that is possible. On the discard ban, a couple of words. I'm happy to talk about avoiding discards. That uh, means that if we all take this seriously, we would put uh, the fishermen in a position where they get uh, as, as little uh, um, bycatchers as possible. So they have to be in a position that they've got the right gear so that they have as little bycatch as possible. Now I'd like to hear how far preparations have got on that and I'll leave the rest uh, up to my colleagues. Thank you. Merci, Ulrike. Thank you, Ulrike. I pass the floor over to Raymond Finch now. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Madam Director General, I wish to draw your attention to the proposed uh, drift net ban. Uh, small, under 10 metre boats in the UK are being unfairly penalised by a measure which is intended principally regarding Mediterranean bycatch of animals such as turtles, diving birds, etc. This is not relevant to UK fisheries, which have little, if any, bycatch. We have in the UK, particularly in my home region of the South East, had for centuries a sustainable fishing industry of this type, and the EU's archetypal one-size-fits-all policy in this matter is utterly unfit for purpose. The seas around the UK are completely different from the Mediterranean and must be treated as such. If the EU must be making the rules, then there must be at least exceptions for small boats at the heart of UK communities. Thank you. Merci, Mr. Finch. Thank you, Mr. Finch. I'll pass the floor over to Isabel Levine. I know that she has to leave, so I'll give her the floor immediately. And uh, thank you, uh, Mrs. Evans, for, for coming here. And uh, we are too very proud of, of what we did last mandate with the reform of the common fisheries policy. And I do agree with you that it would be a good idea maybe to turn this committee into a mare committee rather than just fisheries, because it's all interconnected, as you said in the beginning. It's all, all the marine environment that is the precondition for good fisheries and for the livelihood of fishermen also. 
And um, one particular, I think, the, 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 the basis of the whole reform was uh, the Article 2.2 in the new basic regulation, which states uh, that we should have our fish stocks above levels that could keep, uh, the, uh, produce maximum sustainable yield. And the little word above was a word that we fought very hard for during the, the reform, and the Council was, was quite reluctant. That, that was indeed the Commission that proposed this word to keep stocks above levels that can produce maximum sustainable yield. And, and the reason for that is because if you look at the reality, as Ulrike just pointed out, sometimes the calculations are wrong, and maximum sustainable yield, to have the stocks at maximum sustainable yield, doesn't mean that you have a good environment necessarily. It's just a measurement where you could, the, the, the maximum that you can take off a stock. So there's a contradiction in the basic regulation now where we are really saying that stocks should be kept above those levels that could produce maximum sustainable yield, really uh, using the precautionary approach. And the next sen sentence which says that we should um, uh, set all, 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 all quotas at uh, MSY levels. So my question to the Commission now is how are we going to make sure that we get the advice from ISIS to make sure that stocks are really rebuilt to these levels where we have healthy marine environment with abundant stocks and we're not keeping what precisely at the level where we could actually also be under the levels that produce maximum sustainable yield. And uh, I think this is also, uh, mainly a question of how we put the questions to the scientists on giving the advice. So we get an advice where we keep the stocks at levels which, by the way, the Americans and the Australians and many others already do. So that's my question. Thank you. Merci, Isabella. Thank you, Isabella. I'll pass the floor over to Peter van Dalen for the ECR group. Well, hello, Madam Evans, and good afternoon to you. My name is Peter van Dalen, and I'm the coordinator for the ECR group. I'm new on the Fisheries Committee, and um, I think you know me, Madam Director General, because I was the vice chair of the Transport Committee for several years. Perhaps I could um, refer to three points you made. First of all, um, I agree with what you were saying about maximum uh, sustainable yield. I agree with what you said on that, but I do have a question. Now, the development um, of a particular type of um, net uh, is supposed to be good. Uh, well, I'd like to know what you think about this new fishing method and what about the North Sea policy document uh, and what about the technical uh, provisions? Do you think that you could open up a little bit more to this uh, new uh, technique? Now, with regard to the Mediterranean, uh, the Mediterranean uh, has been a difficult area for some time, desperate, uh, as you said. Um, what would be a way of ensuring drastic change in the Mediterranean? I think that so far we haven't really been able to do much, but I'd, li I'd like to, to hear what you really think. You think that the situation is really bad, um, and you could perhaps tell us exactly what you think could be done to improve the situation. Now, um, then we have the landing obligations. Now, obviously, this is cause for concern, um, particularly as far as my country is concerned. You are not expecting too many difficulties in the initial phase, but my question is, what about the later stages, the subsequent stages? Uh, what do you think about this regional approach, and, and what do you think are the real problems there? Merci, Peter. Uh... Thank you, Peter. Joao is uh, coordinator, so I pass the floor over to uh, uh, Madame Serra Rodriguez. Maria Lidia, perhaps, would be easier. So perhaps you could speak on behalf of Gui. Decir Lidia es suficiente. Yes, I'd be happy to. I just wanted to ask the Commission 
within the common fisheries policy, one of the objectives uh, was uh, uh, to uh, give value to small-scale fishing. Has anything been done about that? Uh, does, what are the Commission's intentions? Merci, Lydia. Et je passe la parole. Thank you, Lydia. And then uh, to uh, wind up with the list of coordinators, Antonio Marinho y Pinto for the Liberals Group. Obrigado, Presidente. Thank you very much, Chairman. Well, this is my first statement on this committee, and I would like to mention a few points which my political group and my Portuguese political party are particularly keen on. Now, obviously, the sea can't be the golden hen. It can't be excessively exploited, because if we were to do that, we would end up by depleting our stocks. And we have to not just be uh, profit-oriented and, and think of uh, the, the larger scheme of things. It's important, therefore, that we respect our marine resources uh, throughout the European seas, so that we will be able to uh, continue to fish in those seas. The uh, coast uh, uh, around Portugal is a very long one, and a large proportion of the Portuguese population uh, survives uh, thanks to uh, fishing, uh, which is uh, why fishing is so important for us, as well as environmental issues. There's another aspect which I'm rather concerned about, and that is that we do not do a lot in terms of the budget. We don't have considerable uh, budget potential, which is a bit of an anachronism, because Parliament surely uh, should be able to decide on its own budget. But here, uh, obviously, there's something something wrong here, which I'm beginning to understand, but which I'm finding very hard to accept. So there is a prin the principle of representativity. We are representatives of the, uh, the voters and the taxpayers, and we should be able to decide on the budget. It's also important uh, to remember what our objectives are. We must try to ensure that those targets are met. And one final point, of course, there are uh, divergent opinions within this committee, as there are indeed within Parliament. However, I uh, would like to ensure uh, that there is less uh, vehemence in, in terms of expression of uh, divergent ideas. Of course, one can always disagree with a colleague, but um, all colleagues are free to think and to say what they think, even if we feel that uh, what they're saying is uh, obsolete, because we're just discussing ideas. Yes. Well, I pass the floor over to Lowry now, for who could perhaps try to reply to uh, the uh, questions, and to my own question, indeed, as well. And then we pass the floor back over to the other colleagues. Okay, thank you, Anna. On the eco-label, I will remind you that not everybody is as keen on it as you are. But we have Just promised, it. It. we have promised that we will deliver a report on it. Uh, that will come next year, as you know. We will keep that promise. And then I think we will have to have a really, you will have to have a really good okay. political okay. discussion amongst yourselves as to, as to where the new legislature will be. I think that this is a, this is a, we will keep our promise of delivering a report. So it's a little bit premature to promise you a legislative proposal. On the, the landing obligation, you said you, you've actually put the most difficult question of all, and I don't have a real answer to it, but I'll have a, a début de réponse. So, comment allons-nous contrôler qu'il n'y aura pas vente de how are we going to ensure that these undersized fish are not going to be sold? There is a risk that this could happen. The best answer I can have is that if we implement the control regulation as it is written, then we have half a chance of doing it properly. 
So the control regulation, as it stands now, already now, says that the member states have to control the quotas, so shall we say the landings, right? But the, the control regulation also says that the, this data has to be triangulated with the sales notes data. So when we have IT systems in the member states that match the sales data with the catch data, then we will have a much more effective means of really controlling what is really sold. Okay? So it has to be a systems-based reply. We worked very hard uh, over the last few years to make sure that the Member States put in the right IT systems on the catching, on the landings. Uh, they have a lot of progress to make on the sales side. Uh, we're pursuing them that so, uh, now. There's technical progress necessary, but also if we need to do infringement progress, uh, processes to bring that on board, we will. So we have to do it in a serious way. Systems, triangulation of data, that's the only way to do it. The risk is absolutely enormous. The risk has always been there in the Mediterranean. I'm not 100% sure to you that the discard ban actually makes that worse. But uh, that's for a discussion another day, perhaps. And I will say immediately yes to you about uh, your request on, uh, on the supporting documents for the omnibus proposal. Gabriel, uh, thanks for the support on the Mediterranean. Uh, I think we need to have a very free and frank discussion about what, what it is that needs to be done now, and uh, we will do that in an open way and hope that the Parliament can help us to identify better ways forward than we have achieved so far. Um, you ask the Commission to make another omnibus proposal. I'm going to say no in a very plain way, straight away for that. Um, but, however, I will say that when you get to the trilogues stage, of course, the Commission will do its utmost to help facilitate uh, a reasonable outcome. Uh, Comdab. Comdab. So it really would take the process backwards if we would make another proposal. So I'm absolutely not going to say to you that we're going to do it. And, you know, we will bow to the wisdom of the co-legislators as to what delegated and implemented acts are necessary. We are the service provider there rather than demandeur. Ulrike, I think we have a lot of the same agenda, so we will give you the Parliament the Baltic Management Plan, and I really welcome your uh, personal uh, interest in that and also the urgency thing. I agree with that. Um, you had a specific question on where are we in terms of uh, discard ban and the selectivity measures. I would say to you that the progress on selectivity measures is patchy. This needs a session or a lunch session all by itself. I think if you want to organise that, we can do that in detail because that's the only way to do it properly. I would say to you that some fishermen are engaging in it more actively and uh, more seriously than others. Uh, that's the reality. Some fishermen have developed some really innovative solutions and now we need, I think, to make sure that other ones know about those solutions and that there's a technology transfer across the European fleets. Anything that the European Parliament can do to help publicise and make transparent the positive stories, you know, we would be glad to, to help you organise. That would be one way to do it. Mr. Finch, um, I hear what you say on the drift net, drift net ban. I would say that it's not too late to bring intelligent facts to the co-legislative table. Um, the scene moves now to the Parliament and the Council, in fact. So if we have missed something in the Commission proposal, we tried our best to get all the relevant facts during the consultation, the extensive consultation that we carried out. If we have missed relevant facts, it's not too late for relevant facts to be brought to the legislative table, for sure. I mean, we will, I'm sure that the Parliament, you, it's in your interest to bring those facts to, to your colleagues' attention now and to the Commission's attention as well. So I wait, you know, any further specificity uh, with interest. Isabella, you make the, the really difficult question as well. I'm going to give you a bit of a cheap reply today. I am more concerned this year about getting the right decisions from the December Council than I am about more refined scientific approach. We come to the more refined scientific approach of above MSY. We're nearly, nearly there for some stocks. But the political focus for me now is to get to even at MSY stocks for many, many more stocks than we actually are. That's where the political focus will be. But we have to discuss together how we uh, then make qualitative uh, progress beyond that 
I'm not 100% sure when is the right moment to go into that discussion. But for sure, uh, I know you're going to be pushing it to do it perhaps slightly sooner than I will be comfortable with. But I'm, I want the same thing as you in the end, probably. I, that's a bit of a mixed answer, isn't it? But uh, I hope that you understood it. Mr. Van Dalen, um, development of new techniques in the North Sea. I don't know if I missed something in the interpretation, but I'm pretty sure I know what you're talking about. Um, my, yes, my, my ambition as, as somebody who is involved in the European legislative process is that ultimately Europe does not legislate fishing techniques at all, but, this is done, but that this is done by basin at regional level with some very general parameters uh, enacted at European level. So on a personal professional level, I would say it's aberrant for me to say, yes, I will propose you to legislate this, legis this technique, however beautiful or not it may be. Because I think that's the way that we legislated so far. It's a bit of a historic way of looking at it. The more modern architecture that we should create shouldn't be based on, an, on a list base at all. We should be legislating results desired results and then leaving the fishermen to decide how to get there as much as possible. I think that's the approach I would advocate. So, you know, in that respect, my view about whether pêche électrique is good or bad would become irrelevant. That would be good, wouldn't it? On the Mediterranean, we need a special session. I can't go into it now. There's so many variables. One is, have the one variable is, um, have the national plans that have been very recently adopted been given enough time to work? Are they good enough? Are they good for purpose? We don't know that yet. We have to get to that understanding very quickly. But one thing I think we should be prepared to think about is, in the MED, we've only had tax for bluefin tuna. We haven't had tax for any other fishery so far. It's a little bit facile to make that comment back to you, but perhaps it's a, a, a relevant dimension. But that would be huge, huge politically. And I think, you know, does it make sense in a context where you have a high sea, where a lot of other fishermen would not be bound by EU rules? Perhaps not. But getting tax into the international context, how do we get there? That would be part of the story, perhaps. But opening our eyes to change as you implied, I think is, is, is certainly there. There's too much, there's no deniability about these facts now, but I don't see very much more appetite politically to do something about it. Okay. okay. I can leave it there, no? On, well, let me just say one thing about the small scale uh, to, to Mr. Santa Rodriguez. Um, on small scale, I'm just going to make publicity for uh, Alan Kadek, your leader here, because I think that in terms of how the Parliament has legislated the reform that's there now, there are plenty of improvements that are there for the small scale fisheries. So, for example, higher co-financing rates, um, an understanding and massive support potential for the small scale fisheries to get together in producer organisations in a more effective way than they have done hitherto, and actually an understanding that the small-scale fisheries are really even more important than the large-scale fisheries in terms of added value uh, for the jobs on land and the fisheries communities. But I do believe that we have the legislation now that will deliver the support necessary for those, uh, for those industries to, to, to do better in the future. Merci, Laurie. Alors, mes chers collègues. Thank you, Laurie. Well, it's already quite late and we still have another dossier to deal with uh, which is IUU. Um, I have six requests for the floor so could I ask you to be very brief so that Lowry will be able to reply quickly and we will be able to tackle the next subject on the agenda. So I pass the floor over to uh, Diane Dots uh, without further ado. Thank you, uh, Mr. President, and first of all, may I congratulate you uh, on your new position as Chair of the Committee. Um, there certainly is a lot to do. Again, to Laurie Evans, thank you for coming. Um, I will make some points, um, and I know that tomorrow morning, Laurie, we can go into um, greater detail on some of these issues. 
Um, you speak um, very uh, optimistically about um, the discard ban and the landing obligation. Um, I just make the point that um, many of the fishermen that I meet on a, a frequent basis uh, express uh, confusion as to where it is going. They need greater clarity and certainty and they need it very quickly since it, uh, it is up around about five months until this actually takes place. So I'm really just expressing their view around the need for clarity and the urgency with which it has to be dealt with. Um, you also um, express a view which I agree with um, of um, very general parameters being set at a European level and regionalisation being real and meaningful. In that omnibus proposal, despite Northern Ireland's fishermen being praised for the innovative solutions they have had to uh, selective gear, for example, uh, and reducing discards, um, well, I am really disappointed and they are disappointed to know that many of the solutions that they put forward are not included in the omnibus proposal and again I would like to take that up with you uh, very, very clearly. Um, I think I will leave it there for the sake of time and thank you for coming to present to us today. Merci, Diane. Thank you, Diane. Mr Ashton. Um, it's always useful to have this kind of exchange of views. Um, the reform of the CFP has been a, been a very long process, and I don't just mean the two years or so up, leading up to the agreement we've just had. I mean the, including the similar process ten years ago uh, when we had a two-year process and a so-called reform, when many MEPs at that time, including myself, were raging against the scandal of discarding uh, and uh, calling for much, much more uh, local, uh, regional, zonal management. Now, at that time, the Commission was against all of that, uh, and we didn't get any of that. Um, I'm glad to say that the, during the process of this uh, reform, we were starting from the point of view uh, of the Commission accepting that the CFP had been over-centralised, etc., etc. Um, which brings me now to the, again, you won't be surprised, the landing obligation um, one of the key um, achievements, uh, if that's what it is, but it will only be that if it succeeds in uh, minimising unwanted catches as opposed to just landing anything and everything. Uh, and I think that that is the crucially important part uh, for me of uh, my support for the principle uh, of the so-called discard ban, that it must be accompanied by the most enthusiastic uh, possible encouragement and assistance, financial and otherwise, to the sector to uh, minimise uh, unwanted or unintended catches. But of course, in some fisheries that is extremely difficult, such as the mixed whitefish fishery that the, um, the sector in, of North East of Scotland are uh, largely involved in. I would be interested in your ideas about that and whether that was in the uh, more difficult the following year phrase that I think that you used in relation to, uh, to that, because it is crucially important that we achieve something with this idea, but that something does not inadvertently bring about major casualties in terms of uh, boats and businesses going bust, because the, 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 the uh, allowance of the flexibilities are simply not enough, or quota uplift isn't there to allow for uh, a realistic approach. Uh, the other main component uh, was and is for me decentralisation, regionalisation, whatever. Um, and uh, for that, I know you will be familiar, but uh, for that, I think we need to think ultra decentralisation. I was encouraged by another phrase that you used uh, regional proposals had been re received for the first. Uh, part of, uh, of the discard uh, ban. Uh, that's good, but regionalisation, uh, please uh, bear in mind that there is no UK fishery uh, in a standard one-size-fits-all sense any more than there is an EU one. It's completely different in north-east of Scotland, Shetland Isles, uh, and the parts that, uh, where drift netting uh, was referred to uh, earlier on. Merci, Anne. Merci. Désolé de... Thank you. Sorry for interrupting you, otherwise we're not going to get through everything. Y 
Yeah, so the Director General is here. So I just wanted to mention this. We were talking about the external dimension of fisheries. I just wanted to ask, this is uh, so controversial. Uh, it's about the agreement uh, uh, with uh, uh, Mauritania. I'm just thinking about the future and the renewal of the agreement and the need from the Spanish and Galician point of view uh, to uh, include the cephalopods fleet. So what is the current state of that in your thinking? Thank you. Merci, Paco. Uh, je... Thank you, Paco. Isabel Thomas. Thank you, Chairman. I'd like to thank Larry Evans for coming along. I share her regrets uh, on uh, our committee's view of integrated maritime policy. I hope that this mandate and commission will help to uh, get things changed. I'd also like to say that it's true for the European Commission as well. On the STC, uh, WFP fisheries and the social aspects uh, which uh, falls neither under uh, DG Mari nor under the Fisheries Committee. I'd like to thank you for considering resources in a more uh, regionalized uh, way than was the case in the past. I think in uh, terms of fisheries and fishing zones, we need now to lay down uh, the uh, boundaries and I share the point about the uh, Mediterranean. I'd like to thank you for this leaflet and say that progress still needs to be made. For example, the fishing fleet and other data are always uh, dealt with according to member states, whereas uh, Spain, France and others have situation that situations that are very different, for example, between the Mediterranean and the Northwest Atlantic. So we need to be careful in presenting member states' uh, data on the omnibus regulation and landings. I wonder, I'm wondering whether you have a timetable. You talked about uh, the omnibus. Uh, you said uh, that uh, you were working on that, but what's the timetable? I don't know whether it's the right time, but uh, this echoes what was just said by our colleague. I would have preferred to have seen a major financing uh, program on selectivity before multi-species uh, fisheries and the 1st of January 2016 date so that we don't end up uh, with uh, very uh, tricky situations. As I was saying on the 2015 budget before, that budget was supposed to be a booster to prepare the major dates in common fisheries policy, including uh, uh, the landing obligation. Uh, so I think we need to uh, take the time to prepare our fisheries in our member states for the landing obligation. Then on data, it's essential for fixing quotas, the management plans and the principles. I don't uh, contradict what Council has said on that, uh, but I will add one thing which is along the lines of what you said about fishing techniques. The precautional, precautionary principle quotas, the nature of the challenge, all of that means that we need data, not just for quota. And you were saying uh, Europe does not legislate on such and such a technique. You said that. I've taken note of that. I think that when we're talking uh, uh, about drift nets, for example, which is a technique, are the situations different depending on the techniques? I'm happy to talk about techniques, but let's talk about all of them. Our colleague earlier on uh, I think uh, it was talking about electric fishing. I'd like to know whether that technique has an impact on juveniles, has an impact on ecosystems. I think we need to, to be better informed. Thank you. Clara now. 
Clara because I'm not used to your names yet. Good afternoon and thank you, Chairman. This is a magnificent opportunity. I will go along uh, with other uh, new members in this parliament uh, and uh, this uh, fisheries committee that it's a great uh, opportunity that we've got the Director General with us this afternoon. I know we've uh, asked for the floor a lot, but I wanted to say uh, that small scale fisheries is an important subject and I was I welcome very much uh, what uh, the director general said I think there needs to be a clear uh, distinction and sp explicit support for uh, small scale fisheries uh, given the sustainability uh, issue I'm from Andalusia Andalusia in the south of Spain a uh, small scale fishing is very important for the population there so that's what we're hoping for for the next uh, few years the Mediterranean system is something we've talked about. We need to have an open debate on that, I agree. Perhaps a specific uh, exception. We're always concerned about this. Europe is attempting to make uh, an effort to uh, alleviate the situation in the Mediterranean. Uh, there are other uh, neighbouring countries, though, that perhaps don't share that uh, objective. Finally, on the external dimension, members have uh, asked about Mauritania. It's very important for the Spanish fleet. There are three agreements uh, there, Mauritania, with the licence uh, expiring on the 31st of July. That's a great uh, concern for the fleet. Senegal. An agreement was reached for th on three months, but it's not entered into force yet. So what's happening with that? And Guinea-Bissau, can you say briefly uh, what the current state is uh, with those uh, three agreements? It's very important for the Spanish fleet. Thank you, Clara. Annie? Thank you very much, Chairman. Thank you very much, Chairman. You can always call me Annie. I'm here for the first time on this committee and indeed in the European Parliament. I was in uh, a member of the Agriculture and Fisheries Committee of the Dutch National Parliament for 12 years. Now, I've heard a lot during the campaign from the fishermen. And the question now is, uh, what about the water? How clean is the water? Um, is there any scientific research, uh, has anything been done in cooperation with ENVI on uh, the North Sea and on the um, actual health of the water? Um, what are we going to do about that? Is something going to be done about that and food also uh, given to um, fish? Thank you, Annie. An Anja. I know uh, that sometimes uh, your last names are difficult to pronounce, so I think it's friendlier anyway to use your first names. Uh, That's fine by me too. Well, first of all, I would like to thank Lowry very much for uh, what she said. And she gave a number of positive points and she did uh, imply that she would like uh, the people, the world outside be uh, informed of these positive developments. Hopefully they will be informed of the more negative aspects as well. Now at the moment uh, the fish population, uh, a large proportion is overfished at the moment. Uh, the result of 25 years of common fisheries policy is that 88% of European species are overfished. Now, if we go on like this, in a few decades' time, we won't have anything left. Which is why I would like to know whether it wouldn't be possible to uh, do something which would be better. Now, in those areas where the stocks are being depleted, um, and I'm not just talking about uh, certain types of target varieties, but all of them, would it not be a better idea to span fishing in these areas completely and subsidize fishermen rather than um, stimulate fishermen to try to keep on catching even more fish? Thank you, Anya. 
Right, we've heard everyone. I'll ask Lowry now to respond and answer the questions. Okay. Okay, Diane. Um, I agree with you, of course. I mean, we need to get on with the adoption of the rules in force for the fishermen that they will have to apply 1st of January next year, as soon as we can. Uh, completely agree. We're doing everything we can to do that. So that, that's what I referred to my earlier remarks. I'm going to try and get the stuff out of the Commission by the first week of October. But we can already point the fishermen to the joint recommendations that have been advanced uh, from the regions. And if I say to you already now, we think these are pretty good. In practice, you know, they know what's going to be there now. So they haven't got the stamp on the, on the form, but uh, if there is going to be any problem after the scientists uh, have finished their scrutiny, we will make sure that we feed that through also to the fishermen so that they know as much as we do. So there will be a parallel informal process uh, going along with uh, the formal adoption process. And then perhaps you and I can discuss bilaterally the Northern Irish issues uh, tomorrow as we have scheduled to do, to not to take too many people's time on that issue. But, uh, you know, we might have to agree to disagree this time, but we might agree in 2015 is where we're going on that. Okay, Ian, um, I think that you're saying very much like Ulrika was saying about the importance of selectivity. No? Um, couldn't agree with you more. Um, we have to do as much as we can to encourage that direction. But I do observe that uh, even in Scotland, you know, the East Coast people, as long as this, we're, we're informal off the record now, right, again, but you know, I think that the east coast of Scotland is more open to it than the west coast of Scotland. I don't understand why that is. I see uh, innovative solutions being uh, tested out in the North Sea, and I ask for the Nefops fishery, for example, why doesn't that get carried over to the west coast of Scotland, and I don't understand the replies. So there are, there are obviously somewhere culture issues here that I think we will have to work together to resolve. I don't think we can legislate getting over cultural inertia issues, and the, for sure that's part of the story. Yeah? But we will, all of the, the instruments are there to support it, but if the fishermen don't want to do it in the first place, I don't know how we do that. I don't know how we do that. I think you will have to, you will have to help us in the west coast of Scotland. This is what I think. We will have a, a more difficult application example of the discard ban for sure when we get to mixed white fish fishery. We, the legislator was been, has been very smart in getting the easier fisheries, the pelagic fisheries, the cleaner fisheries uh, in for this first year of application. But that actually gives the, the stakeholders and the member states concerned the opportunity to put together the mechanisms, uh, the political mechanisms which they have to invent for everywhere outside the Baltic. Uh, in a relatively benign uh, situation. And the, the message I would say about the, the second stage, which is much more difficult than the first stage technically, is that the member states and the stakeholders should start doing that now and not wait another year. We will need a lot of time to get clarity of rules for the whitefish fisheries. So I think the fact that we have until 1st of January 2016 to, to introduce those rules doesn't mean that we should wait until the 1st of January 2016 to devise those rules. You know, I would like everybody to get going with that in September this year, honestly. And if we can crack on with finalisation in the first half of next year, that's better than finalising it in the second half of next year, no? So that would be my plea. If you can go home and persuade people to do the same, you know, I'm going to do the same from here. Um, but I don't, I don't underestimate the difficulties. The tools are there, but we will have to see how to use the tools. Absolutely. Um, Mauritania and the cephalopod fleet. Okay. The Mauritania agreement, last year when we were talking about it, it was about cephalopods. This year when we're talking about it, to be perfectly honest, it's about whether we have an agreement at all or not. So the, the situation has gone a lot worse in terms of the EU-Mauritania discussion in that so far we've had two substantive rounds and we've made no progress whatsoever on substantive issues 
on really, really substantive issues related to sustainability, related to value for money, related even to the date of the agreements that we're talking about. I mean, it's truly astonishing. So the last news is that um, I believe that there has been an instruction issued to the Mauritanian Coast Guards that this agreement, the current agreement, comes to an end at the 31st of July. It's not true legally. Huh? It comes to an end on the 15th of December legally. We are addressing that at the highest level. President Barroso has written to the President of Mauritania about that to give him his political and legal understanding of uh, where EU-Mauritania uh, relationship should be and fish within that. Uh, and now let's see whether that has an impact. Uh, we will go over there to Nouakchott next week to discuss that. And I can absolutely promise you that the issue of cephalopods, or at least experimental cephalopod fishing, um, is on the list of our uh, negotiators in terms of the future agreement. But uh, I am actually pretty concerned about this agreement being seen through to its end uh, as of today. Let me pick up um, the, Mrs. Aguilaria Garcia's uh, points on Senegal and Guinea-Bissau whilst I'm here. On Senegal, Senegal, we have a, a very good uh, negotiation, and we are actually waiting for that to be coming out of the Council, and I expect that in September. Okay, so that's nearly, nearly there. I expect the, the fishing to be, uh, well, the league, the, all of the, the law and the politics to be finished by September. So it's under EP consent procedure, but I think that uh, we're nearly good to go there. Guinea-Bissau is a, a complex situation. You will remember that the Commission made a, a proposal a long time ago, and then the political circumstances were such that that uh, the Council actually stopped processing that proposal. The situation now is changing, though. It's, it's, uh, there's, we believe that there is a window, um, the, a political window, by which uh, we might be able to reactivate that. This is certainly what the Commission would like to do. We think that the fishery agreement is one mechanism whereby the EU can really help Guinea-Bissau normalise the dreadful political situa situation that's been there. Um, so this is certainly what the Commission wants to do. Uh, and we will see what the, what the Council does with that. I would expect that the Council will take it up again. Uh, Mrs. Damanaki, my boss, met uh, the, yes. the Minister last week. So we are ready to activate the minute that uh, the EU legal machinery uh, lets us go. And perhaps we will be able to do that September, October. This would be my best estimate. So I sincerely hope we will be able to de-block that, help to de-block the Guinea-Bissau situation then. All right then. Um, on Isabel. Uh, oui. Je t'ai dit que c'était quick fix uh, l'omnibus, c'est vrai. Uh, yes, I said the omnibus was a quick fix. We'll do whatever we can to get to the true... Uh, reworking of it and propose that to you in 2015. I need to uh, wait uh, for my new boss before making any formal promises but if you uh, ask uh, the new boss uh, the same question you might get a better answer. It's possible that uh, that the answer might be beginning of 2015. Uh, on selectivity, I won't uh, repeat what I've said before, but uh, the proposal for drift nets uh, is an exceptional proposal. The proposal is uh, made on the basis of uh, what we understand to be uh, the scientific basis. It's a truly extreme case. So I hope it's not something that's been generalised. So the proposal is uh, to uh, ban that kind of gear in case, only in cases when it can be truly justified. It remains an exceptional case. Mrs Schreier, um, how clean is the water in the North Sea? This is not my specialist area. 
Uh, I'll have to ask uh, Carl Falkenberg to come to talk to you about that. Uh, we have the, our environmental agency, of course, makes the, and makes the reports under the Marine Strategy Framework Directive for uh, good environmental status. But I haven't seen too much in that about the North Sea. For sure, we have a lot of information about the Baltic Sea. I'm sure you're aware of that. The North Sea, I have to, I have to admit, pass on your question, and I'll have to come back to you with uh, some homework. So we'll note the homework, and I'll come back to you with something intelligent, I hope, if it exists. And uh, Mrs. Hazekamp, banning fishing in some areas. Well, I think this comes within my uh, definition of technical measures. Technical measures can be gears. They can also be uh, temporary or permanent uh, closures. Absolutely. This is a normal fishing management technique, and it's something that is in the toolbox. So the use of the tool in the toolbox, again, I would come back to my normal default position. It should be, in the future, something that we look at regionally, at best, and then at European level, if we really have to. But that's my personal position, and other people may have different views. Okay. Merci, Laurie, en tous les cas. Thank you, Laurie, for your high-quality responses. Obviously, you can't satisfy all of us. That would have been too good. But I think it was an important, interesting debate. It was necessary particularly given that we have new colleagues who are just figuring out how the committee works. And I think it was very helpful for them to have the Director General here to, to have discussions. We um, have gone long, long beyond the time planned for this. I think we should stop here with the agenda. I would uh, apologize to César de Ben, who came here to talk to us about a very important topic, one that's very um, important to us, the IUU fishing. We'll have to come back to that in September, and Cesar will come and explain what the Commission's doing on this. So, if I may, Anna Paola, please. Have members received the coordinator's recommendations? So there's no point in adopting them then if they haven't received them yet. Bon, vous allez recevoir. So this evening you will receive an email with the coordinator's recommendations, which we um, agreed on a moment ago. I would ask you to respond tomorrow morning and of course agree. If there are no objections, then we can uh, adopt those. Thank you for responding to those as quickly as possible tomorrow, please. We'd like to have been able to give you them earlier. We'll try to work a bit more quickly next time my um, head of unit agrees. We haven't got through all the points on the agenda, but we've, uh, uh, we haven't exhausted the agenda, but we've exhausted ourselves. The Chair kindly thanks the interpreters, the Secretariat, uh, Larry, once again, for her presence. Uh, next meeting, 23rd of September, we'll ask Cesar to be here to deal with IUU fishing. Ulrika. Uh, colleagues, please. Bit, vielen Dank, Alain. Ich habe eine Bitte. Just a, a, a brief request. I think it's quite a... It's quite difficult that we don't have any drinks available here. I've had three meetings in the new parliament. There was um, only a tiny amount of water available in the room. I think it should be possible to organize, um, at least everyone should have one small bottle of water. I mean, 